Hey everybody, Ryan here, back with another video, and today I wanted to discuss what I think is probably one of the most important questions we can ask ourselves. What is truth? Right. This is a question that um, affects pretty much every area of our life, but it's especially important when it comes to discussing our Christian convictions and also really any subject of philosophy and theology. So I think it's extremely important for you to be able to have a basic definition of truth to work with and to be able to discuss the nature of reality with others. I guarantee this is going to be very beneficial for you in your evangelistic endeavors because I'm pretty sure the people that you're going to be talking with are not going to see things the same way that you do. So let's get started. I want to begin by borrowing a definition from a theologian named R.C. Sproul. He's a man who I admire greatly. And he once said that truth is that which conforms to reality from God's perspective. Now, I like this definition a lot because, first of all, it's very simple, but at the same time, it's not superficial. In fact, I think it's very profound and also very biblical. So what I want to do in this video is kind of unpack that definition a little bit, elaborate on it, and explain why I think he words it the way that he does, and then give you some biblical texts to back up that definition as well. So he begins by saying, Truth is that which conforms to reality, which basically means truth is that which corresponds to what is actually real. And therefore, anything that's not true, that which is a lie, would be something that is out of touch with reality. So truth is that which conforms to reality, but who determines what reality is? Consider this, a child and an adult do not have the same perspective on reality. We know this because of the way a child and an adult might view Santa Claus. A child might sincerely believe that Santa Claus exists, therefore in that child's mind, Santa Claus is part of reality. However, the adult understands that Santa Claus does not exist, so the two people have very different views of reality. Now, of course, that's just a silly example, but this also applies uh, for, for bigger topics as well. For example, people who are pro-life do not have the same perspective on reality as people who are pro-choice. Just like someone who is uh, Republican wouldn't have the same view of reality as someone who is Democrat. Likewise, a Muslim would not have the same view of reality as a Catholic does, nor would a Christian have the same view of reality as an atheist. Actually, I don't think there's any two people in the world that really have the exact same views on everything. So between any two people, you're going to find some variance about what they think is true or what they believe to be real. So whose perspective are we supposed to trust? And I think that this is really where the second half of R.C. Sproul's definition of truth uh, really comes into play. He begins by saying truth is that which conforms to reality, but then ends by saying from God's perspective. And that's really the key to this definition, that truth is that which conforms to reality from God's perspective. And I think this is reasonable because God, being the creator of the reality in which we live, would also have the most accurate understanding of the reality in which we live. You know, sometimes we get things wrong because of miscommunication or because of our bias, but that's never a problem for God. God has no bias, he shows no partiality, and he never lacks any information. So his perspective on any situation or any subject is always 100% accurate, which means his perspective is the truth. And of course, this is exactly what the Bible says. Let me read you something from Isaiah chapter 45 verse 18 and 19. For this is what the Lord says, he who created the heavens, he is God. He who fashioned and made the earth, he founded it. He did not create it to be empty, but formed it to be inhabited. He says, I am the Lord, there is no other. I have not spoken in secret from somewhere in the land of darkness. I have not said to Jacob's descendants, seek me in vain. I, the Lord, I speak the truth and I declare what is right. Now, I want you to notice that in that passage, verse 18, it begins by talking about how God is the creator of all things or the creator of all reality. And it ends in verse 19 that saying, because he is the creator of all reality, he is also the one who properly interprets all all of reality and therefore he speaks truth he speaks what is right and if you really look at the context of this passage look at what comes before and what comes right after you're gonna see the context is about the false gods of the other nations so what we have going on here is God is contrasting himself with these other gods saying they don't speak truth they don't define reality because they did not create reality and then going on to say that I'm the one who created reality therefore I define reality and I speak what is true so really this text is telling us to wise up 
Listen to our Creator because He's the one that has the right perspective on all things. So truth is that which conforms to reality from God's perspective. And anything that does not um, align itself with God's perspective should be rejected as a lie. But now this raises one very important question. If truth is that which conforms to reality from God's perspective, we can only know truth if we know God's perspective. So how do we know what God's perspective is on any given situation or subject? This, my friends, is why I love the Bible. You see, we could not know God's perspective on something unless He communicated that perspective to us somehow. And that's exactly what we have in Scripture. It is not merely the words of man. It is the very Word of God. It is God's perspective. It is God's opinions and God's thoughts. I want to read for you 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20 through 21. Listen to this. Above all, we must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation of things. For prophecy never had its origin in the human will, but prophets, though human, spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Did you catch what this basically said? It said, Scripture does not have its origins in man, but in God. So in this passage, we have Peter's understanding of the inspiration of Scripture. And the way he seems to understand it is that God put his revelation in the minds of the authors and then superintended their writing in such a way that what they wrote was exactly what God wanted them to write without God um, bypassing their personalities, their language, or their writing style. The scriptures are the result of divine inspiration, and so literally it is the Word of God. So what Peter is basically saying is that though the scriptures were written by people, the content of that, of that writing and of the scripture ultimately has its origin in God, not man. What we have written on the page is as if it came from the very mouth of God, and if it came from the mouth of God, it is because it came from the very mind of God. It is his perspective. So, my friends, to summarize, truth is that which conforms to reality from God's perspective, and God's perspective is found in the text of Holy Scripture where he communicates everything that we need to know about who he is and how we are to live before him in this life. And therefore, we are to study the word, we are to obey the word, and we are to preach the word. And in doing so, we will be letting the world know what God has to say.